Uh, my name is Dante. I'm, uh, I'm here in Cambridge uh, uh, to do my MBA in Judge Business School. And uh, <clears throat> I'm from Brazil. And uh, having the, the business background, I thought what could be an interesting subject for you guys? I believe you might be related to science. I don't know. Uh, so uh, maybe you guys could want to turn your researches into a business someday or something like this. And this is uh, a way of uh, determining the, the, the value, the financial value of, uh, of an idea, a project, or even uh, an entire business. So uh, besides the, the wine and cheese that we have later, this could be something useful for you guys in your professional career. Yeah. Uh, you can make me any questions along the, the presentation. I have only like, I think it's 10 or 13 slides here, which are only to help me uh, present the idea to you guys. All right. Uh, so I'd like to start with an example. Uh, let's suppose that I have a goose that lay golden eggs. And I'm here to sell that goose to you. And how much do you pay for it? And don't, don't, don't say yet. Uh, you guys can make me any question you want about that goose. I will answer them. And, and so that you can make your best offer. And I would like you guys to write down uh, in a piece of paper. Uh, and I'll show, I have the, a value. I mean, I, I made the, the valuation of this goose myself. And if your offer exceeds the value of this goose to me, I'll, I'll sell it to you and uh, explain why. If not, also, I won't sell and explain why I, I didn't sell. All right? And, and you guys can make me any question you want now. I, I already have uh, the, the assumptions defined, so it's not a tricky game. I, I have it right down, so, all right? How much gold is bought per year in the world? <laughs> how much gold is bought? Yeah, by weight. Uh, okay, you're asking about the demand, right? Yeah. Uh, there's demand for, for the, the golden eggs. Don't worry about that. All, all, all golden eggs that will be laid by, by this goose will be sold. Don't worry about it. How often do we get eggs? Can we make a family of golden <laughs> the goose will, will lay The goose will, will lay uh, golden eggs once a month. Once a month. How does it yeah. live? The, uh, the life, left, yeah, life expectancy. Five, five years. Do you have to feed it? Yeah, you have to feed him. You, you have to maintain this goose, and I'll say you, I mean, you have to feed him, you have to give him shelter, and, and, and things like that. And, uh, yeah, the weight is uh, 500 grams, and uh, uh, about the, the maintenance costs is around 1,000 pounds per month. Yeah, otherwise, uh, sorry? What's, what's the market price for gold? I'm okay, so gold is being sold for uh, 30 pounds per gram. I even checked this. Yeah. Did you just say it was 1,000 to maintain it? 1,000 pounds per month to maintain it. To maintain and, 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 uh, and pay the, the selling expenses, uh, all expenses related to maintain this, this goose and the operation of selling the eggs. Yeah. It includes everything. Uh, yeah. Wait, they ask for one gram, you said? The, the way? Yes. It's uh, 500 grams. And 30 pounds. 30 pounds per gram. Yeah. All right. Okay, are you guys ready to make the offer? Just write it down with your name on the paper so that I can tell who, who won. And, and before you guys sue me later, I don't actually have this goose, okay? It's just for the, <laughs> just for the, the sake of the example here. 
do these things typically live? Five years. Five years. He'll live five years and, and produce eggs during that period. Don't, don't don't say it. Just fold your paper. No, no, it will be fixed. Fixed price during the the whole five years. Yeah. I don't know how valuation is done. Yeah, but don't worry. Uh, for the this exercise, could you hand it? There's no no inflation. I mean, the the price the price of the gold and the expenses will be fixed during the the entire life of the goods. Now that you guys made your offers, I'm going to talk about some techniques of doing valuation. I have brought here two uh, techniques. Uh, they are the, the most used ones in, in, in the market, financial markets. Uh, they're used even for multi-billion or multi-million deals. So uh, one of them is very simple and, and has some drawbacks because of that. And the other one is a bit more complex but it's still the, the most used one uh, uh, that I'm going to show you guys here. So uh, the first one is called multiple valuation. This is the simple one. And we, uh, you, you guys probably have used that uh, technique before. For instance, when you're looking for a flat to rent, you probably use the multiple to define if that was a reasonable, reasonable price for the rent. What you do in, in that technique, you first choose the neighborhood where you want your flat to be. Then you find similar properties in terms of size, number of bedrooms, number of uh, toilets. And, uh, and once you have the, the prices, the, the rents, uh, you make like a multiple or an index, for instance, pounds per square meter. And with that multiple, you're able to compare each property, even if they have different uh, areas. Uh, this is a very, as you can see, it's a very simple technique and uh, despite that it's very used in, in financial markets. Uh, you find analysts using this to define the, the value of whole companies. When you're using it for, uh, for companies, you change it slightly. You, you f like the first step is very, very similar. If you want to determine the value of uh, like a uh, uh, car manufacturer, you select that industry. And within the industry, you're going to look for uh, similar companies from that one that you want to, to determine the value. And by similar here, uh, I mean they are almost the same size, they have the same growth rates, uh, the same levels of debt, and uh, and also a very important feature, it must be publicly traded companies so that you know the value of those companies that are comparable. Otherwise, you won't uh, be able to do the index. And having the value of those comparable companies, you then divide by a, a relevant metric, which in a business could be uh, uh, the sales volume or the profits of that company. And then you have your multiple, you, which you can apply to determine the value of your target company. I'll give you an example. So you start looking for a comparable entity. If you're looking for a flat, for instance, let's say, okay, I know the, the rent of the Wolfson flats, it's 1,000 pounds per month. It has 100 meters. 
So my multiple will be 10 pounds per meter. I'm looking for uh, another uh, flat that has 90 meters. So I could say, okay, it's roughly 900 meters, uh, 900 pounds. So it's very, uh, very uh, simple. This is how you would apply to a company. Apple is valued in, in, at $500 billion. This is the actual value of Apple. Apple has earnings or, or profits of uh, $51 billion per year. So the multiple here is price per earnings, so it would be 10. So Samsung is a similar company. Uh, I know the earnings of Samsung, they, they, they say it's uh, $11 billion. So uh, applying the multiple, I could say uh, Samsung would be worth 115 million pounds. And if you go to the, to the stock exchange and check the value of Samsung, it's very close to this one. It's actually 102 uh, billion pounds. So using a very simple uh, multiple or metric, we reach the value of a very large company. But as I said, it has some drawbacks. Uh, maybe if you apply the same metric to value Google, which has earnings or, or profits of uh, $15 billion, you would reach uh, 178 billion of value of Google. And if you go to the stock exchange, the actual value of Google is um, more than 400 billion. So this multiple here didn't work for, for valuing Google. And that's because uh, Apple and Google are not entirely comparable companies. They have very different growth rates, very different markets where they operate. So it's not, uh, Apple is not a, a, a comparable company for using this. So con uh, pros of this uh, method, very easy to use. Uh, you are doing, uh, as we say, a free ride on market information because you're relying on, on value of co publicly traded companies. So when uh, analysts determine the value of a company in the stock exchange, you're, they use lots of assumptions and you're taking all of those to, to compose your multiple. And uh, drawbacks, uh, it's not very easy to find comparable companies. Uh, as I said, they must be publicly traded. Not all, all companies are publicly traded. Uh, and uh, they don't have any detailed assumptions of maybe the operation of that company is going to change after you buy, so the multiple won't consider that. For instance, in the case of the goose here, how would you apply a multiple to the goose? You cannot because there's no other uh, goose in the market so that you know their value. Uh, but if there were, you could ask, how many golden eggs does your goose produce? Oh, it produces two eggs per month, and I, I, this goose will be selling to you by 500,000 uh, pounds, okay? Then you can create a multiple using value per eggs. That, that it would be how you would apply in multiple. The second technique, which is the most used and is more complex, more detailed, is the discounted cash flow method. Uh, it's based on this principle here. The value of a business or project is given by the present value of its expected future cash flows. So there's three important concepts here in this phrase, and I'm going to talk a bit of each one, okay? Starting from cash flows. So uh, this method, you're interested in the cash flows that this business, this project, this idea is going to produce, right? In the future. Uh, by cash flows, you could understand the, 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 the profit that this project is going to produce. Uh, profit is an accounting term. It's, it means revenues minus costs. And uh, all companies are, uh, it's a mandatory for companies to, to register and, and uh, control their profit in an accounting term, in an accounting sense. But it's not actually profit that you're interested in. You are interested in cash flows because although they are similar things, even profitable companies 
cannot deliver cash to their owners. It's a very uh, odd thing to think, like a profitable company, but it still doesn't uh, uh, distribute uh, money to shareholders. This can happen in for a, a number of reasons. Uh, for instance, the company may have working capital needs that it are not considered in the profit calculation, so the money has to stay within the company. Uh, the depreciation, which is also uh, an accounting uh, uh, term, it's not actually cash related, but it's considered in the calculation of profit, so it may change the actual cash flow. Or even investments, capital expenditures, they are not considering the profit as well. But as the company to, to maintain itself, to, to continue to grow, it will need to make investments and the money to do it will come from profits. So even though a company is profitable, it's, it still can uh, not be able to distribute cash flow to its shareholders. What is working yeah. capital? Yep. Oh, uh, you uh, haven't taken into consideration uh, the tax uh, aspect because, uh, as you know, uh, dividends are tax. So many, many, um, for example, uh, US-based companies that pay uh, dividends to uh, resident USA in the US, um, the recipient of this dividend have to uh, pay a lot yeah. to, to the nose. Uh, yeah. dividend. So they prefer to uh, keep these uh, profits inside and use it for uh, external acquisition. For a yeah. th th that's why, th th this is one of the reason why Apple has so many uh, profits stashed abroad in the, in, yeah. in the US. In the US. So this is one of the reasons that yeah. uh, they can have an influence. On this, is, this is a very, very good point, Matteo. You're completely right. And I hope you guys consider income tax in your goose valuation. <laughs> uh, so when using this, this math, oh, you had a question also, right? And can you give an example of what working capital would be? So working capital, it's like this. Let's use the goose example. Uh, you sell the golden egg to someone, but that person is only going to pay you in one month time. So you had all the expenses to maintain that goose, like 1,000 pounds per month. You sold the egg, but you still didn't receive any money for that. Where are you going to get that 1,000 pounds? That's the working capital. Okay. Uh, another example, uh, you, you have the 1,000 pounds of expenses, but you do the same thing with your supplier. You don't pay him right away. So you have a, a positive uh, working capital in that sense. So it's whenever there's a difference of competence of the month of your expense or revenue and the actual cash flow to the company. Okay. Okay. So uh, again, you're actually interested in the free cash flow, which is the amount that is actually going to be in the hands of shareholders or the owners of that company. Or if you are the owner of your business, your idea, what you're interested in is after paying all your expenses, after doing investments, after everything, how much money was left in your hand. That's what you need to use this technique here. Okay, this is cash flow. Projections. So you will need to project cash flows. And uh, you, you will project for as long as your company or business or project exists. It could be even forever. Uh, and uh, to do so, you will need to make uh, assumptions about the macroeconomic environment, about the, the industry where, where your, your company is operating, uh, and more importantly, about the company itself. You guys make me, made me very important questions about the use. That's what you need to do when you're going to project it. Is the price going to change? Is there competition? Is another goose being sold in that market? All of those considerations must be made in your projection so that you can uh, have a good estimate of the future cash flows of that business or project.
All right. Any questions? And thirdly, and the final concept here is present value. Do any of you, does any of you know what present value means? Okay, so we're, we're making projections, which are the, the cash flows that we're going to receive in the future, right? But money in the future has a different value than money today. That's the underlying principle here. A pound today is worth more than a pound tomorrow because money has value in time. And there's a reason for that. For instance, opportunity cost. If I uh, approached you and, and asked, what do you prefer to have 100 pounds now, I will hand it to you now, or 100 pounds in one month? You would probably say, hand it to me now, right? And when you do so, what you're thinking is, well, I could take that 100 pounds now and invest in, in the financial market or, or, or do anything that could uh, increase that 100 pounds in one month. So uh, when you do so, what you're actually doing is, look, this money in my hand now is worth more than if you were going to deliver it to me in one month time. Uh, another reason is risk. If I made you the same offer, how will you be sure that in one month time I'll be here to handle you the 100 pounds? There's a risk that this money won't be in your hand after a while. So you prefer to have it right now. And finally, inflation. Maybe that 100 pounds in one month time won't buy the exact, exact same things that it would buy today because of inflation, price, prices rising. So I would rather have the 100 pounds today. And to consider uh, this, this, uh, this value in time, what we do is we discount uh, values in the future to the present by dividing it by a certain rate. And there are several uh, ways of reaching this rate, determining this rate. Uh, here are uh, two uh, ways of doing it. I won't get into much detail here. One is the, the capital asset pricing model. It basically states that uh, you will expect higher uh, rates for higher risks. So let's say, if you really trust me, that I will pay you the 100 pounds in one month, we, you will discount this by a low percentage. But if I am uh, someone that you don't know or has a bad reputation, you will probably discount it for a higher rate. So that, that's how you, this, this method here is to determine this. There's historical evidence of the correlation between risk and, and percentages of discount. Also, the weighted average cost of capital, which is uh, for companies, uh, the, the level of debt that they have also interferes in the, the percentage you should use to discount money in the future. This is the, the general formula for the, the, the discounted cash flow model. It's basically that the sum of all future cash flows in each period divided by your discount rate. And this uh, second part here is uh, the terminal value. It's used to determine the value of uh, infinite cash flows. Let's say you don't expect this business to, to, to shut down in a period. It will operate forever. This is how you determine the value of those infinite cash flows. In this example of the goose here, you don't actually have to consider it because I told you guys it's, it, the, the goose will live for five years, so there's no need for uh, infinite cash flows. Okay? Uh, some additional considerations. Uh, when doing more complex valuations, uh, like for valuing a, a company or a bank or something like this, you will take into account more, uh, more things. 
For instance, you could use varying discount rates. Uh, you could uh, make assumptions about the, the depth of the, the company that you're going to value. Uh, are you going to produce tax shields by buying this company? Uh, are there synergies or anti-synergies when you buy this company? For instance, I already have uh, a goose that lay golden eggs. By buying a second one, will I be able to uh, save in maintenance by having two goods, one next to the other? So there's a synergy here. This has value. This should be taken into account in the, in the projection. And also, uh, illiquidity assumptions in controller premium. Uh, illiquidity is, is uh, if something is very hard to sell, there, there will be a discount in the value. For instance, uh, it's very easy to buy and sell shares of companies publicly traded because there's people buying and selling every day. But if you want to sell a house, for instance, your house, you, you might take some time to, to complete the deal. And because of that, you probably will have to sell for a discount. Let's say if you need to sell your house tomorrow, you will probably do that with a discount because that's not the kind of thing you do every day. Controller premium is, if you're going to be the owner of the business, you should pay a little bit more for that because there's a, there's a value in being the owner of something. Instead of, for instance, I'm going to be just a, 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 a minority shareholder, just a small shareholder. Uh, there's a difference in being the owner in that. Okay, about the, the goose, these are the assumptions, as you can see, uh, the, the, the same that I told you guys. Nobody asked me about the income tax, but uh, I, I made the assumption of the UK income tax here, 45%. Which savings we have What is that? Which savings we have Oh, okay, <laughs> yeah, but you, you should consider it. And uh, also the opportunity cost, which is the percentage to discount future cash flows. I presume you all assumed the same value of money in the future, right? But they, they should have been discounted. Uh, let me show the value of this goose in, in my valuation. I did this, uh, this, this is a DCF. So you can see uh, this is a financial statement I projected for five years. This is the, the revenues, which is the, the number of eggs per month, per price, per the, 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 the weight of each egg. The expenses, 1,000 pounds per month. The tax, this is the profit, the tax, the net profit. And this is how the present value, uh, this is the present value of each of those cash flows. As you can see, as far as you go in the future, the value uh, reduces, meaning that I would rather have 50,000 pounds today than 92 pounds in five years using the 13% discount rate. So the value here would be in, in this valuation 324,000 pounds. This is the value of the goods to me and I would only sell it for a value higher than that. So. Let's see here the values you guys have. Uh, wow, 840,000 pounds. This would definitely be one I would sell. Uh, would you like me to tell your name? No, no, okay. No, 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 I won't tell. My plan is that someone in the room will have made an arithmetic error and then I'll sell it to them. Ah, okay, let's see if someone made any error here. Uh, uh, one million pounds? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow! <laughs> 250,000, that's an interesting calculation. Uh, it looks like this guy here uh, made the discount, right? Who is it? Uh, you did the discount? Nice. Uh, I don't have the number here, but uh, it's 30 times 50 times 12 times 5. That 
will be a large number, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, this one oh, here. Three. I wrote 3,000. I meant right. 3,000. Wow. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> There's much more value in that. Two million. Wow. <laughs> Sold. <laughs> Sold. And, and 700. So, sold for two million pounds. <laughs> it was worth to me 300. So, you can see the profit I made in, in, this, in this operation. All right. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.